Hey, everybody, welcome to the show. You know where you are, Expert Talk with me, Tigo. And as always, you know, I love bringing you experts from all walks of life, from all over the globe, but rarely do I get to bring someone who has literally interviewed people from all walks of life, who is an author, he's a speaker, He's been on stages that you and I maybe even dream of. And he's actually got a really cool event that I actually get to be a part of. Hmm. Now, what is Tigo talking about now? Today, we have Greg Reed on the show. So sit right there. We'll be right back. Welcome to the show. And here we are. I've been looking forward to going face to face, knees to knees with you. You've been in over a hundred books. Yeah. What made you decide to take that journey? Because you could have gone in any direction. Oh, because I'm the least qualified guy to do what I do. I mean, I'm dyslexic. I can't spell very good. I can't read, can't write. Look, play me words with friends. You'll win every single time. But I understood the power of you work your strengths and you hire your weaknesses. So I made, found amazing ghostwriters and editors that could take my gift of gab and then craft them in a way people want to read it. In fact, you want to see something very few people have ever seen? Yes. Okay, hold yes. on one second. I'll be right back. When you write a book, you do a query letter. It says who you are, what's your message, why are you an expert, who's going to read your book? I was turned down by 268 publishers in a row. These are all oh, my goodness. These are all my rejection letters of every person telling me why I'll never be an author. And here we are now, 118 books later, 45 languages, millions of stories shared worldwide. Go figure. You did a book, Three Feet Away from Gold. If this isn't a great segue to that, because so many people quit oh. when they're inches. Not inches. feet, but inches away from success. I'm seeing so, three feet from gold behind me. Yeah, right here. Three feet there you go. There's a story about the miner, R.U. Darby, who gave up three feet away from a strike of gold. And the message is how many people quit one class short from a degree or sales or marketing? It's easy to quit, but it's the people that persevere and go that extra mile. They're the ones we tell the stories about. First, there's a dream. Then there's a challenge. And then there's victory. Never give up in the challenging times. Now, when you say that, you just showed me over 200 rejection letters. The average Joe would have gotten one, maybe two, and said, writing's not for me. Clearly, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm out. How did you keep going and say, uh-uh, I just need to find the right publisher? Yeah, well, it's something called the knowing. See, I didn't hope, wish, believe. I just knew I was onto to something. I just didn't know how. So I didn't take it personally. It's like the, the five agreements or whatever. And so or four agreements. So I just knew for myself, I was onto something. I just had to find the system. And, you know, it was interesting. One quote from the first book called The Millionaire Mentor was shared 37 million times last year. And you've seen it on bumper stickers, coffee mugs. You just didn't know it was my quote, but when you Google it, you'll find it. And it's all about goal setting. It says a dream written down with a date becomes a goal. A goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. A plan backed by action makes your dreams come true. That comes from that book that was turned down 268 times. Ooh. And how many millions and millions of people would not have been inspired by that? Just one quote from that book alone, if I would have let someone else tell me what I could or could not do. So what took you from being an author, because I'm dyslexic as well, so you are definitely a mentor for me, you know, being an author and saying, okay, I've got this, I'm doing it, I've got my first book out, here comes my next, I'm going to be a co-author in something else. You could have just stayed in that niche and never went anywhere else. What made you decide to start speaking from stages? Well, it was interesting. I actually started from stages and that's how I became an author. I was ah. just speaking at a local university after I sold my business for a really nice little chunk. And some kid came up and said, you should write a book. And I go, I've never really read a book. I go, that's a great goal. So I had a bucket list item. I added it to it. And like I said, it was a journey and a goal that I would not, you know, let another person dictate, you know, my outcome. 
And I just knew that there was a solution. I just had to find it. It's kind of like when I went to Africa and climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. I didn't know how I was going to do it. So I found the Sherpa that I climbed it 900 times. Wherever they put a boot print, I put a boot print. I just followed successful actions of others. And we can have anything and everything as long as we surround ourselves with people who are already doing what we want to do. Wait a minute. Go back. You went. I heard him. We're, we're going to make him go back and talk about that. You, you climbed. Mount Kilimanjaro. Well, like I said, I had that bucket list. I've ran with bulls in Spain. I've swam with sharks. I've carried the torch for the Olympics. I've, yeah, you name it. I've made major motion pictures. You, whatever you can think of as a kid, I wrote down on a list and I had to cross every single one off before I passed away. And unfortunately, I know it sounds strange. Unfortunately, I crossed the last one off two years ago. And it was a surreal moment when they gave me an honorary PhD and then another one where I became a doctor. And so I realized I could start a new bucket list, but I did something special. I sat okay. my son down who's nine years old and said, let's start your list. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I got more enjoyment helping him cross those off his bucket list than I ever got of mine. So one, what scares you? Anything? Everything scares me. I just do it anyway. <laughs> now there's so many people out there that are afraid to even go out their front door especially now i mean people could be watching this in 2034 and not even know what COVID is but right now we're coming out the backside, hopefully of this COVID thing and people are scared to go out their front door you know but you are taking on the world literally and you're telling me that everything scares you but you do it anyway how do you do it well, Steve Wozniak, the guy who created Apple with uh, Jobs, he, you know, he sat me down one time and says, you know, here's the secret. He goes, most people run from their lack or their fears. He goes, well, you know, we ran towards ours. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, in these little microchip processor thingies came out. They were very expensive. We could only afford one. Jobs sold his car. I sold my calculator. We pulled our money to buy one. He goes, but Hewlett Packard and IBM would make machines that go from A to B with 20 chips. Not all the money of God. He said, I'd pull away five and go from A to B with 15. I'd pull away five, get it to work with 10. Eventually, we went from A to B using our one. Yeah. He goes, we weren't trying to be innovative, but by finding the shortest, cleanest path, we changed the way people do personal computing for the rest of their life. He goes, where could you be right now in your own life, your own business, if you stop looking at something as your challenge, but it might just be your greatest blessing Grace opportunity in disguise. But do you believe that people stop themselves? No, I don't. I, I think they listen to other people's outside uh, thing, and that's what stops them because they get the idea, they get the inspiration, they get the the aha moment, and then they let a family around the barbecue who's never done what they want to do talk them out of it. Successful people seek counsel, and failures listen to opinion. Opinions based on ignorance, lack of knowledge, or inexperience. Counsels based on wisdom, knowledge, mentorship. If you're a family friends and I say, I'm going to write a best-selling book, they're going to try to protect me and talk me out of it because I'm dyslexic and they've never written a book. I go to Jack Canfield who wrote Chicken Soup. He's going to say, here's what you need to know and give you a counsel based on wisdom, knowledge, mentorship. If we would spend our activity only seeking counsel and ignoring opinion, that's the day our lives would change. Youth mentorship has been very important to you, correct? Yeah, well, that was the first book I did called The Millionaire Mentor. People think I mentor millionaires, but I work with inner city kids. And when I'd show up in a brand new fancy car, they call me their millionaire mentor. I got a letter of commendation from the president of the United States, and it changed my life in my community. Secret knock. Yeah, we've been doing secret knock for quite a while now. And it all started, you know, as a little side hustle joke type thing where people kept saying, how do I meet your friends? So in my living room, I invited 12 people to hang out with some of my influential you know, associates. And they said, do you need a ticket? And I go, no, just go door to door and do the secret knock. When I hear it, I'll let you in as a joke. <laughs> and it went on and people told people and people. And now we're Forbes Magazine, Inc., you know, top rated event in the world for entrepreneurs. And the idea is surround yourself with people, again, that are getting the results that you want for yourself. For example, instead of someone talking about starting a clothing brand, imagine having tacos with a gentleman who started Ugg Boots, a multi-billion dollar brand. Or if you have an idea for an invention, here's a guy who did that little magnetic strip on the back of a credit card. What would life be like if you hung out with the people who actually accomplished what everyone else is just dreaming about? 
yeah, it changes your, your complete life and it opens your dreams to realities is what it is. And when I heard about it and heard we had an opportunity to be a part of it, that I got to actually come on stage with you, I said, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, underline, I'm in. I went and looked at the website and we've got it going by. And if you guys want tickets, I'm going to tell you, go look at the website. And literally, you got to fill out an application. And it will not tell you who's appearing because it's a secret. That's how cool this is. I went out there, read this and said, I have never, I've been in media, I've been in web development for 30 years and I have never seen a website that said, want to know who's coming? We're not going to tell you. That cracked me up. Yeah. Our, what? Our, our whole catchphrase is we're the greatest event you cannot attend. So that's it. It's like, it's only the cool kids. Look, you can go to one of these stadium events and there's 30,000 people and we get it. But out of that, there's 300 really amazing humans. Our mm -hmm. event are those 300 people. And so what happens, we're very specific of who we invite, who we bring into our sphere. But what's not, there's no even, there, name tags aren't allowed. Nothing, everyone's just gotta be cool. Our whole concept is be cool. And what that means is look, if water runs out on your table, get up and get water and bring it back for everyone else. Be normal. If trash is on the floor, throw it away. You're not your mom's house. Just be normal. And imagine 300 of us, you and I type of people hanging out together and we pull out our phones and someone says, hey, I'm looking for this. And we go, here you go. And here's the contact and it's done. I mean, that's what the world needs right now. And that's what we're bringing. What's next? What are you going to do next? I don't, I don't know. I guess it's more of these new things. Like I said, I've never done TV before, so I'm doing a new TV show. I uh, had a successful movie with Wishman on Netflix, and now I'm working on another project, uh, writing more books, doing more events. This is the life. You know, someone asked me the other day, they go, are you, you know, when are you going to retire? And I go, w imagine having a job where you show up and everyone applauds when you walk in a room, <laughs> and then they give you a standing ovation and pay a bunch of money and tell you how great you are. I go, what? What am I where am I going to find a replacement for this gig, right? So I think the life is pretty darn good. And more importantly, I think the takeaways that we can leave and the nuggets for people where they have those aha inspirations later on, that's what I thrive for the most. That's what inspires me. When I meet someone and said, hey, you know, I read a, something in your book five years ago, it changed my life or that one thing you said that one time. And we, when we got in the industry and you can attest to this, we said, if we can impact one person's life, then we did our job. Well, once you've impacted the lives of millions and millions of people, I think we think, how can we do it exponentially even faster and more? Because again, sometimes all we need is one person to believe in us to tell us what we can do. And eventually we can do just that. And I thank you so much for creating it. I thank you so much for just being you. Well, thank you for having me in your family. And I look forward to uh, synergizing as we move forward. I'll see you later. today because we got somebody special y'all we got somebody that well he wrote a book about go for stupid yeah you you got to understand this man is amazing am i going to tell you who it is before the commercial you know better than that sit right there we'll be right back the power of pink summit and the now honors has moved to the downtown Las Vegas area in the famous Fremont District, bringing the most brilliant and talented women in the world. To one stage in one place. 
where their power will be captured for the world to see. And it is hosted by the one and only, Teresa T. Gogar. We present to you, Now Honors 2023. Yeah, you heard me right. I got to show it to you. Go for stupid. I love this book title. We literally are in studio just to meet with this young man. Steve Sims is here. What's happening, sir? How are you? I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy. Can't get any better than that. Can't get any better than that. I appreciate you coming out in the Vegas heat and hanging out with us. I got to ask you, you know, I saw this book cover. Our good friend Greg Reed said, you got to check it out. Steve's got a new book out. And I was like, he's coming to Vegas. Oh, we got to interview him. First, let's talk a little bit about the title. Yeah. Go for stupid, huh? Yeah. It, it, you know, the funny thing was, as I was doing stuff throughout my career, I realized that the second you say something's impossible, mm -hmm. you've already given it value. You've already given it fuel. You've already given it power. You know, the amount of people that go, ah, oh, well, I tried, but it's impossible. So we made sure this word within my company was the Voldemort of words. We never used it. So we always used to get a request from a client when I had my concierge company, and we'd be like, right, okay, how can we do something stupid with this? How can we go for stupid. We want to have something that is laughable based around this thing. And we used to do that. We used to avoid the word impossible and go for stupid on every project. So we had people wanting to have a, a dinner experience in Florence. As you know, we closed down a museum, stuck them at the feet of Michelangelo's David, and then had Andrea Bocelli serenade him. We had a client that wanted to go backstage and meet the rock band Journey. Eh, not good enough. We put him on stage and he actually sang with the band and is now the shortest term lead singer of the rock band. So wow. we always tried to see how far we could stretch. And then through COVID and through the way the world is today and through the coaching and a bit, now we look at people and we go, okay, this is your goal. Is it stupid enough? You know, how can we actually make this ridiculous? We want to put you in a situation where your goal, your aspiration, your focus it's ridiculous. Okay, okay. And then guess what happens? You stand two chances. One, you achieve it. And this achieve book it. hopefully is gonna help you achieve ridiculous goals. Or, and this is another beautiful one, you fail and achieve more than you would have gone for in the first place. See, it's these people that turn around and go, hey, I wanna make a million bucks a year. Then don't go for a million, go for 10 and fail at five. So that's the whole premise behind it. Add something stupid to your goal and aspiration. I love it. You know, and, and you're turning a, a negative into a positive for Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Because when I was a kid, you know, my father would say something like, what did you do? Go for stupid when I would mess something up. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he's like, uh, hello, are you my child or not? <laughs> you know, because <laughs> what the heck are you doing? But when you're saying go for stupid, you're saying the, the sky's the limit. There is no limit. Just blast through it and go for it. I love it. I love that idea. Well, we're entrepreneurs and yeah. we're both in the same groups and we mingle around with different entrepreneurs. There is, a, there is a, a thread between all entrepreneurs. We're curious kids mm -hmm. and we don't play by other people's rules. So we want to disrupt. We want to go for something. Now, here's the dumb thing. Most successful entrepreneurs are ridiculed and laughed at just before they're applauded and revered. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, hey, you want to be the next Elon Musk? Then don't worry about the noise. Go for it. You want to be right. the next Jay Bezos? You want to be the next Steve Jobs? Go for it. Every single one of these people were, were virtually protested about how ridiculous their ideas were. And now look at them. When you first started and you were, you know, connecting people to get to the next great party and be able to get past that, you know, little magic red rope. Yeah. That everybody drink. What is it like on that side? Do you have that red rope? How do you apply that? with what you're doing now as a speaker, coach, author? Today, there is only one talent you need. Okay. You see, you can download an app to build a bridge, 
grow plants, do a podcast. You can download an app on absolutely anything and therefore avoid doing the work yourself. Mm -hmm. Download it. Mm -hmm. You can't download the ability to communicate with another human being. And today we are in a relationship economy. Things happen because you can connect with people. Mm -hmm. If you want, you mentioned Greg Reed earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want something, you call up Greg, Greg introduces you to someone else. Relationship capital has got a greater return on investment than any kind of crypto. Mm -hmm. And today, when so many things are happening that are out of our control, relationships are everything. I could lose and I'm challenging it, you know. I could lose everything tomorrow. All my money, my bikes, everything. Tomorrow. But if I've got those relationships where I can fire up and go, John, Bill, Greg, something's happened. Help me out on this. What do I need to do? Well, actually, let's bring you in here. Let's do this. Let's get you working on that. So today, it's all about relationships. Whether or not you're getting behind a velvet rope to hang out with Andrea Bocelli, or whether or not you're having a conversation with someone talking over a business plan or right. discussing the latest camera techniques. It's that connection. Now, I, you know, we mentioned Greg. I always, he's helped me out so many times and connected me with such amazing people such as yourself. But the last time we had Secret Knock, we were there, you did this speech and I was like this. Because you were talking about being yourself, being comfortable inside your own body. Right. How important is that? Because people go around and buy, you know, $5,000 purses and red bottom shoes and they've got cars they can't really afford. And they're trying to put that facade on. And then when you start calling them on it, start talking, they've never been outside of their neighborhood pretty much. And they don't understand the world at all. And it's like, why don't you just be you? And they can't find out why they keep hitting the ceiling. They can't seem to grow. Yeah. So how important is that? Well, the, the obvious answer is not only important, it is absolutely everything. And you need to understand why. Um, it's tolerance, okay? We don't have a lot of tolerance now. Mm -hmm. And COVID and all of these situations that we've been, can you look at the years that, that we've had? Politics, race riots, um, war, um, pandemics mm -hmm. who could ever have written that thing all we need is a little green aliens to come down and we've got everything let's you know not invite them in, let's please. not let's <laughs> not and i'm sure someone somewhere's <laughs> gone oh they're here already <laughs> the, the point is that our tolerance for information has become real thin what we've got to focus on today is making yourself and this is key impossible to misunderstand love that now, so many people today, they go into business and they go, well, I've got to look good and my website's got to be perfect. And I've got to do this. I've got... No. Here you go. MIT 101 on business. Have a solution. Find the problem. Find the person who's got that problem. Sell them the solution. Yes. That's business. Without a client, you ain't got a business. So that's what people should be focusing on. But today we want to make that decision easier because with everything that's going on, mm -hmm. you need to help people make a decision easier. You need to be very easy to understand and easy to repel. And this is going to be a weird one. You see, I don't want to capture everyone. I guarantee you now, there are people that are probably switched off for this episode. Right. They've gone, don't like him. He looks funny. Sounds funny. Don't like him. Don't worry about it. But if you can truly be yourself, then those other people have a very easy decision as to whether or not they want to listen further. And when they do, and you, me and you have known each other for, what's it been, like three, four years? Like a year and a half, believe it or not. A year and a half. Just a year and a half. It's been long, a yeah. crazy year and a half. But yeah, a year it's and been a half. packed. <laughs> but have I ever not been me? No, you're always you. On stage, off stage, in the bar, walking up, going up the escalator, in the coffee shop, I'm me. And do you know the beautiful thing here? It takes zero effort for me to be me. And yeah. that's the thing. How many people are out there going, oh my God, I've got, I got to look good. You know, I've got to, you know, okay, I'm, in, I'm on the camera. This is my good side. <laughs> you know, they spend so much time worrying mm -hmm. that they don't become natural. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to get everyone. I'm trying to attract those people that I resonate with, those people that have also aggravated people that don't want to settle, and I'm here to help those people. The rest of the planet, we'll be fine. You know, I have to tell you, I want to thank you 
definitely want to thank you because you changed our business and you changed my life. Really? One story that you told, I can't even remember where now, I, it's probably secret not, but I can't even remember where, um, where you were talking about will you have a beer with them? Like, will you sit down with them? And I, and I said, the chug test. Oh my yes. God. We got rid of so much dead weight <laughs> because I was like, no, we would never sit down and have a beer with that person. Yeah. That's not, you know, the kind of people we're trying to work with. We want to work with people that are real, that have real hopes and real dreams. We get, you know how it is. You get this person who has this big balloon idea. Yeah. And then you get it all together and you go, okay, so this is how much it's going to be. And then they go, oh. And then you find out their real budget. And it's like they're not even ready to even be in the same room yeah. with some of the people they want to meet because they're not ready. You're not real. You're not being you. So whenever we meet somebody new, literally doing this interview today, it's like we always say, where's the honey? You know, <laughs> for us, it's like, where's the honey? And would we have a beer with that person? <laughs> So when we got the call, when I got the text message saying, hey, it's going to be in town, I'm like, I contacted Alan. Everybody knows Alan. And I contacted Alan. I said, what are we doing? Alan's like, yeah, it's Steve Sims. We're going to do this thing, man. And that's what we did. You know, it's like you when you connect yourself with people like that, it feels good. You know there's no limits, yeah. you know? And you know you can be as real as you want to be. Today we need to understand how to have a conversation, mm -hmm. how to communicate, therefore how to build up a relationship. With all of those things in place, you're strong. But at this moment, just start at the beginning. And you're obviously a professional at it. You need to understand the right questions to ask and the questions that produce value for the person you're asking. Right. So that's that's the importance today. Learn your communication. You can get in front of the Vatican or you can get your next deal done. That's what you need to be focusing on. You are the best, sir. Come back anytime, <laughs> all the time. You are always welcome. I learned so much from you and it's just an honor to have you here. Oh, yeah, lovely to you. Thank you for having me. All right, everybody, you know what to do. If you didn't understand what we were talking about, go watch it again. But it was great. It was awesome. I hope you enjoyed this episode. You know I want you to come back next time. And as always, I'm Tigo, and I'll talk to you next time. Love this dude. Cheers.